Charlottesville is a very special place. Many of us are fortunate to call home. Now, we've got our warts and wrinkles. We have our family squabbles. Mr. Mayor, Albemarle County, I'm talking about you. <laughs> so how do we protect what we cherish about this special place? How do we respect our history, learn from our mistakes, and make this community better for everybody? In 2005, Michael Bills and Rick Middleton founded Charlottesville Tomorrow, two men who cared deeply about this community and were determined to get citizens involved, engaged, and working better together. So back then, we launched a blog and a podcast about local government. Today, we're a critical part of this community's media landscape. Now, looking in the rearview mirror, we can see that we were at the forefront of citizen journalism innovation and at the dawn of the complete disruption of the newspaper industry. Now, 12 years ago, we didn't think what we were doing was journalism. We were just trying to be a clearinghouse for facts. We wanted an online calendar, let you know when the important meetings were taking place with local government. We wanted to share in-depth information with as many people as possible. Our goal was to inform you and have you make informed choices about key quality of life issues in this community. Today we cover land use, transportation, community design, and public schools. Now, let me ask you, have you been paying a little more attention to the news lately? National news? Maybe national politics? What about local news? What about local elections? Where do you get news that you can trust? Who is paying for that news? Who's paying to consume it? Who's paying to produce it? Well, if you didn't know, journalism's in a state of crisis right now. And your first thought might be, well, that's social media. That's fake news. Well, the good news is we're at TomTom. TomTom's all about innovation, entrepreneurs, startups, new business models. Let's talk about business models. Journalism is in a state of crisis because all the advertising revenue has been completely sucked out of the newspaper. You can see in this chart, revenues going back to 1950, they peak in 2000, and then all that advertising money shifts to Craigslist and other online sites. The impact is newsrooms are shrinking. Journalists are getting laid off by the thousands. Penny Abernathy teaches journalism at the University of North Carolina. She said of the 100 counties in North Carolina, 50 are at risk. Half of them are at risk of losing newspaper coverage in their community. Soon, news deserts are forming. So does democracy demand that we do something different? And what are the consequences if we don't? Internet disruptions have consequences. But limited resources can also spark innovation. Limited resources can push people to work better together. McGregor McCants knocked on our door in 2009. He asked if our government reporting could be a part of the daily progress. That was a bold move for the managing editor who had seen his newsroom shrink from 42 people to 18 in the span of five years. Eight years into this partnership, Charlottesville Tomorrow has produced 2,300 stories for the Daily Progress. You can see our byline and logo there. It's the only partnership like it in the United States. And today we produce 50%, half of the content, in the newspaper on those four topics I mentioned. I asked Penny Abernathy Saturday if she could name any newspaper in North Carolina or Virginia that was doing more than it was a decade ago, and she couldn't think of one. And I suggested, well, maybe the answer's right here in Charlottesville, because the Daily Progress is doing more, and its publisher, Rob Geronic, is committed to making sure this is really great content. And our two organizations are going to work together to cover this community, to help inform the public, and make Charlottesville and Albemarle a better place. We're going to do it as a nonprofit, mission-driven organization 
using solutions journalism. Rob and I were honored last weekend to have both our news teams named the best in Virginia by the Virginia Press Association. Thank you. And I, I know uh, Sean Tubbs, a 10-year veteran of Charlottesville Tomorrow, is a crowd favorite, I'm sure. Uh, Sean won his second best in show for his uh, government reporting. So the good news is things are better in Charlottesville. We have more civic media here, and it's some of the best journalism in Virginia. Paul mentioned our new partnership, so let me talk about that. We want to cover the entrepreneurial ecosystem in this community like never before. And we need your help to do that. A lot of you are people we need to be writing about. These are some of the people we've already written about. Students in our schools. Students at UVA launching new companies. Growing, companies growing really fast, like Locus Health. Brand new companies, like Seville Machine and Metis Machine. Our email newsletter is going to be the innovation machine. So we already have 16,000 subscribers to this new newsletter. If you're not a subscriber, when you join, what you're going to get is in-depth content about startups, entrepreneurs, local business, research at UVA, and we're going to tie it back to what's happening in our local schools because these entrepreneurs are creating the jobs we need to be preparing these students for. So are you ready to do something cool? Are you ready? Will you partner with us to support local news? Will you make a gift to our nonprofit newsroom? Many people don't realize 75% of our revenue comes from individual donors, individuals in this community who care about its future and care about quality journalism being available. I know many of you are in the audience, and thank you for all the support you've given us. We have a small team of five people in a newsroom on the downtown mall. If you read us, support us. That would be super cool. If you live somewhere else, look at your media ecosystem. How healthy is it? Does it need an innovative spark? We might have a model for you. So what does the future hold for Charlottesville? Well, if we want to protect this special place, we've got some work to do. If we want to have walkable, livable communities, if we want to have affordable living choices for all our residents, just to name a couple topics, we've got some work to do. To do that, you're going to need information. For democracy to thrive, for government to be transparent and held accountable, we need sunlight shining in from citizens and journalists alike. Thank you. <laughs>